material energy. Uh, but when a, an emotion is in relation with Krishna, it's not a negative emotion. It's actually transcendental bliss. See? So you can relish it. That's why it's important to discuss these feelings and put them in the proper context. When we're having material feelings, even a, a, a nice material feeling huh, of happiness is actually mundane and contemptible because it's in relation with the material energy and it's temporary also. Huh? But these bhavas have the feeling of eternality because they're in relation to Krishna. You know, in some respect, we're always going to feel these kind of feelings because we're never going to be able to relish as much of Krishna as we would like. Krishna is always going to be beyond us. Huh? And the feeling of complete knowledge or complete experience of Krishna is always going to be beyond us. A way to express that is saying that when a devotee tastes nectar of Krishna, it only increases his thirst more and more. Huh? It's like if you drink some very sugary drink, it doesn't satisfy your thirst. It makes you more thirsty, and then you want to drink more. Huh? Similarly, this transcendental emotion or, or taste of Krishna's con uh, Krishna consciousness only increases our desire to relish it more and more. So these feelings of depression or being unworthy or failure to attain our uh, intended goal, uh, these actually serve to increase our taste for Krishna's service. And they actually, in the long run, they encourage us to attain and, and do more and more until we reach a stage where we're actually satisfied. Okay? And that can only happen when Krishna is satisfied. So that means we have to become pure devotees. But even after becoming pure devotee, you still want more and more. Huh? And, but there is a point you reach where you feel, oh, okay, now I'm making Krishna happy. So this is good. Huh? And you feel a little satisfied. It might take 30 or 40 years, but it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Connected with my next question. What's that? So, uh, like these first three or four, these first three or four uh, Sanchari Bhavas, uh, I'm really happy that like we're talking about them so that I know that all the bodies go through these phases and it's not just some weakness uh, that makes me an outlier or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but in the uh, Nectar of Instruction, Rupa Goswami advises that we should be confident and enthusiastic in our devotional service. So does that mean that when we experience these, uh, well, depressing or uh, feeling unworthy kind of bhavas, we should uh, try and get out of them and move on to something that's more confident and enthusiastic? Not necessarily. If it's, if it's a real feeling, we have to be with that feeling as long as it's there. Uh, so what happens is we have to work our way through that feeling, just like Arjuna. Arjuna is feeling depressed in the beginning of the battle of Kurukshetra. Uh, Glanya, he's feeling glani. So what does he do? Does he just sit there and mope? No. He addresses Krishna. Krishna, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't fight this war. I'm feeling so depressed. My hands are shaking. My bow is slipping from my hand. You know, and Prabhupada mentions he was probably crying and like that. All because of this glani, huh? this feeling of depression. Oh, I can't do it. I can't attain my goal. So why? Why, why is this the, the expression for glani? Because you can't hold your head up. Your head is like you know, falling. You feel weak, powerless. Huh? But if that feeling is in relation to Krishna, that's a real feeling. That's a devotional sentiment. Huh? So you should relish it. But then you should also act on it. And what do you do? 
you approach your spiritual master or you read in Shastra or you pray to Krishna for some remedy. You see, it's, it's there as an impetus to get you to do something. Don't just sit in it. Don't just lament and not do anything. That won't get you anywhere. And eventually that feeling of lamentation will turn into real depression. <laughs> huh? So you have to move on it. Sanchari bhava means it's moving toward your sthai bhava, your permanent emotion. Huh? So you have to move on that emotion. When you feel that, then do something about it. Inquire or increase your service or increase the purity of your chanting or um, reduce your offenses or increase your knowledge or get some help from the senior devotee or your spiritual master. Don't just sit there with it. Move on it. Is that more clear now? Yes, so they're there to kind of push the devotee on to a higher ground. Exactly. And if, if a devotee experiences this and then decides to give up or something like that... That's very inappropriate. It's not okay. Yeah, that's an inappropriate resolution of the feeling. Because the feeling is there because of your relationship with Krishna. If you didn't have a relationship with Krishna, you'd be feeling something else, material. Huh? But because your relationship with Krishna is there, you're feeling depressed or anxious or whatever it is. So the cure for this is to move closer to Krishna. Huh? When you get close enough to Krishna, then you'll feel fine. <laughs> so get closer to Krishna. Krishna is right there in your heart. He's not far away in Goloka somewhere. He's right here. He's present everywhere. So you can be with Krishna simply by wanting to be close to Krishna. See, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. It doesn't require you do, you know, 10,000 offerings before you're close to Krishna. No, it simply requires a change of attitude, a change of consciousness. And that you can do by changing your ontology. That's why we talked about all these things as fundamentals to devotional service. How do you change your ontology? By changing your knowledge, by how you view things. Mm -hmm. So if, you ha if you're feeling these emotions and you change your viewpoint from, oh, I'm suffering, I'm depressed, to, oh, I, I'm depressed because I can't get close enough to Krishna. So how do I get closer to Krishna? Then it has very positive value. my experience the the how can, you can tell that that's spiritual is because after you have that emotion you feel good yes <laughs> in material in material experience you have that emotion and then you feel worse and then worse and worse yeah but in, when it's transcendental you feel that emotion even though it's negative it's a kind of ecstasy when, when it's finished it's like ah, it's like hard to explain and it's finished, though, right? Like, uh -huh. looking back on it... Looking back on it, you, you feel good. Yeah. Like when you say some deep secret to a friend or something, and you feel, ah, I'm feel mm -hmm. relieved of this. Mm -hmm. That's my experience. Next question. Um, going. Peter... So these transcendental bhavas are also in the three modes of goodness and passion and ignorance? No, they're beyond the three modes. That's the whole point. They're spiritual. I think he was mixing them because of the intoxication one. What? No, no, it's like not intoxication the, yeah. like, like wine or drugs. It's intoxication in devotional ecstasy. I think that's why. I don't know. Anyway, these all these emotions are beyond the three modes. They're in the transcendental platform. David, should we not become official teachers until we are both self-realized and expert at the scriptures as interpreted by our lineage? You can't become self-realized until you're expert at the scriptures. But without that knowledge, uh, you won't be able to serve Krishna nicely. Huh? 
The, the three levels of devotees are Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, and Uttam Adhikari. The Kanishta Adhikari is a neophyte. He has some faith, uh, but he has no knowledge. His knowledge is only, it's like sentimental or uh, very, very superficial knowledge. Oh, Krishna is God and I'm supposed to chant and stuff like that. And maybe he's beginning to read the scriptures, but he doesn't really understand the scriptures very deeply. The scriptures, even though they contain stories, you can't read them like a novel or something like that. Huh? That's only a very, very superficial understanding of the scriptures. So when that knowledge deepens, and especially when one becomes initiated by a bona fide spiritual master and has overcome the ten offenses in chanting the holy name, then 